Okay, so uh, at this point, let's talk about self-care. Okay. Um, what does self-care mean for us Christians when we thrive in the understanding that as Christians, we are taught to be selfless or to, to give ourselves um, in the service? Uunahin yung iba bago yung pangangailangan natin po, no? Yung self-sacrificing na tipo ng service. So, how do we integrate this? Um, anong ibig sabihin po sa atin ng self-care kung ganito po yung understanding natin? Well, theologically, we can say that <clears throat> or situate yung concept ng self-care dun sa ano, concept mm -hmm. of stewardship. No? Mm -hmm. That we not only take good care of uh, God's creation per se, but because we are part of God's creation, we should take care of ourselves. Mm -hmm. And then another theological strand that can be related to that is the second commandment. Love your neighbor as yourself. As yourself. In fact, uh, in my counseling, I've oftentimes found that people who do not love themselves because, for example, they have not forgiven themselves <laughs> are actually incapable of, of uh, self-care or even caring for others, mm -hmm. right? So, importante yung self-care in that sense because uh, not only is it part of uh, God's command, mm -hmm. part of the two greatest commandments, but also under the concept of biblical stewardship, we really should uh, observe uh, the same kind of care that God exercised towards His creation because ultimately we are responsible to Him mm -hmm. for caring not just for our relationship with God but more importantly our relationship with ourselves, our relationship with others, and our relationship with God's creation. Mm -hmm. So self-care is not being selfish. It's not uh, you know engaging in or binging on self-centeredness. Rather, it is simply admitting that uh, we also have limits, for example, when it comes to caring for others so that uh, we have to take care of ourselves. I, and I, I do remember my experience this. I cared for my wife for 29 years uh, after, you know, this major illness that he wa she was diagnosed with. And at some point, parang <clears> pagod <throat> uh, or what we call uh, compassion fatigue, you know. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, as I sometimes tell my wife, when I would take off, for example, pagpagod na ako from the care home, I simply tell her, darling, I have to take care of myself so I can take care of you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Kasi sabi ko sa kanya, pag ako nagkasakit, sino pa mag-aalaga sa'yo? Diba? So, and of course, pag tumangon na yung misis ko, uh, that of course is the green light for me to go home and get some rest, for example, and get some sleep because sometimes... I just have three to four hours of sleep, especially nung ako'y nagpapastor pa. At the same time, I was caring for my <laughs> my wife and at the same time taking care of my children as well, you know. You are caring on so many fronts, right? Caring for the flock of God, caring for your family, and then you have to take care of yourself. And then sometimes you take care even of your extended family kasi may mga requests sila. Dumating, oh, si ganito, nagkasakit. Pwede pa pong tumulong kayo. O si ganito, uh, may malaking problema, pwede nyo pa pong counselan, you know. But then, we are finite creatures, right? Our resources, our personal resources, uh, our self-resources, in terms of our time, our energy, our, uh, you know, emotional capital, limited po yan eh. And so, we have to determine uh, in a godly way, ano yung priorities natin. <laughs> in terms of how we use these resources that God has blessed us with so that we do not unnecessarily fritter ourselves or, or uh, maybe a better way of expressing it is, is uh, doing so many things at the same time that we uh, begin to realize that we are actually spreading ourselves too thinly and therefore eventually becoming less and less effective personally and also spiritually. Mm -hmm. So, yun po ang aking... <laughs> Ano dyan, uh, pananaw mm -hmm. with respect to self-care. We should not be guilty mm -hmm. about undertaking self-care because we do have boundaries that we have to observe. Otherwise, if we breach those, it will uh, uh, you know, come back to us in mm -hmm. terms of uh, uh, a lesser quality of life and perhaps even uh, you know, uh, a health situation that has become more fragile, more dicey, simply because we did not take care of ourselves. Mm -hmm. 
Pero nga po tayong kasabihan, Pastor, no, na we cannot give what we do not have. Yes, no, precisely. No, yes. And it's interesting enough po that you mentioned compassion fatigue. Mm-hmm. There is such a thing pala po. Yeah, no? there is. <laughs> yes. Which leads us to the next question po, uh, talking about ministerial burnout. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, spreading ourselves too thinly mm-hmm. uh, as if this is really our calling. So def- definitely, bigay tayo ng bigay. Yeah, pour pour yeah. out wine, yeah. broken bread mm-hmm, for mm-hmm. others po, no? So when ministerial burnout happens to a Christian minister and it affects one's mental and spiritual and physical well-being, what can we do about it? And what encouragement can we give? Yeah, when we say ministerial or, or burnout that uh, is related to the fact that you're undertaking kingdom work, I think nangyayari po yan kasi we have breached some boundaries. Mm-hmm. You know, There are some boundaries which you know you should not breach because if you breach that, eventually you will get depleted in terms of what you have, in terms of what you can give emotionally, spiritually, mm-hmm. uh, and also physically, you know, because uh, ang mga, uh, ano po, pastor ay tao lamang, sila ay napapagod, sila ay nagugutom, sila ay uh, nangangailangan din ng pahinga, tulog. And sometimes, you know, uh, when you're a pastor, you're actually on, on, uh, uh, on call all the time, even though you're supposed to have a, you know, one day a week a break. Kahit na sa break mo, pag may nam, biglang namatay, <laughs> or malapit na mamatay, <laughs> miembro, you have to drop everything, right? And, and rush to the hospital, or rush to the place of the accident, or sometimes pag may nag-aaway na couple, kahit na alas tusa ng madaling araw, pag naglilipara na po yung mga plato sa bahay, <laughs> Hindi yung 911 ang tinatawagan yung pastor. pastor. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, it's good kung meron kang assistant o meron kang leader in training, right? Because uh, that means you can delegate some of your pastoral duties. But in its absence, kung meron po kayong mga elders na pwedeng tumulong, who can assist you in terms of not just teaching the Word of God, preaching, but also in terms of practical things like... Uh, praying for others, counseling others, it makes a huge difference mm-hmm. in terms of freeing up the senior pastor, for example, from being burned out. Kasi yung burnout nangyayari kapag ano eh, inaako mo sa yung sarili lahat nung dapat na, supposedly dapat ma-accomplish sa simbahan na yun. Mm-hmm. Pero hindi pwede yun eh, because you can only bite off what you should be able to chew. If you mm-hmm. bite off more than what you could chew, eh, magkakaroon po tayo ng spiritual indigestion or <laughs> burnout. <laughs> Kasi talagang ano, ma-overwhelm ma- tayo mm-hmm. ng pastoral responsibilities. Mm-hmm. Kasi mahirap po yung, ano eh, yung aakuhin natin sa ating <clears throat> sarili yung problema ng, uh, for example, nakakarami doon sa kongregasyon. Mm-hmm. Tsaka some pastors also have this tendency not to cast their burdens upon the Lord, mm-hmm. you know. And yet, it's very clear injunction from the Word of God that we, has, we are to cast all our burdens, ang mga bagahin natin, uh, sa Kanya, for mm-hmm. He cares about us. Mm-hmm. Kasi can you, can you imagine kung daladala mo yun, uh, every single day lahat ng mga sineshare sa yung problema, mm-hmm. yung kabahuan sa, <laughs> sa simbahan, you know. Si ganito, nabunti si ganito, si ganyan, na-rape, oh my mm-hmm. goodness, you know, tapos uuwi ka. You cannot be very clinical about it. You're a pastor, you're a shepherd, and so therefore, what your flock feels, you also feel, mm-hmm. right? And of course, it, it's important to have a break mm-hmm. <laughs> from all this. Yes. And sometimes, hindi na-realize ang congregation niyan, mm-hmm. ang pastor at saka yung kanyang pamilya, kailangan din magpahinga. <laughs> Oo, eh, in my case noon, may sakit na nga misis ko. Meron ako mga anak na pinalalaki. Tapos, in addition, I was handling nine uh, discipleship groups or cell groups. Mm-hmm. You know, lahat ng mga problema doon. Siyempre, lahat nasa saga po din sa araw-araw. Kasi every single day, I had the Bible study. Mm-hmm. So, at the same time, iba pa yung uh, uh, pastoral responsibility sa iba. You have to, you know, uh, teach and preach. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then, uh, you also have to... Uh, <clears throat> minister to yung mga bagong dating, mga bagong salta, mm-hmm. di ba? Kailangan mo tulungan yan, hihahanap mo ng uh, uh, mga kama, or uh, <laughs> lamesa, or silya, or kumot. <laughs> mm-hmm. yes. So, para kami jack of all trades, mm-hmm. actually. So, kung wala ka man lang mapagde-delegatean ng trabaho, 
talagang sa iyo matatambak. Nakaka-overwhelm talaga. And uh, I think this is where we should educate also our congregations to, you know, uh, do their part. At ganun din yung ating mga kapwa leaders na tulungan ka for that if they can make themselves available in terms of counseling, teaching, preaching, malaking tulong yun for you to maintain your sanity and <laughs> at the same time <laughs> make sure that you still have all the marbles. <laughs> <laughs> the story of Eli- Elijah Pastor came to mind yeah. you know when he was exhausted and depressed <clears throat> yeah anong God was his rest precisely oh, pinakain pinakulong yeah, as simple right. as that people. yeah oh, it, 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 you cannot imagine ako pag uh, pagod na pagod na tapos magkaroon ako ng opportunity na makapahiga makahiga lang ng konti nako after, just, even after just 15 minutes na nakatulog ako ang laking bagay na nun yes. na para kong uh, ano ulit Merong bagong energizer na battery. <laughs> Pero kung hindi ako makatulog, nako, o or kulang yung tulog ko, nako, it affects my mood, di ba? O at saka hindi mo hindi mo mabigay yung ano mo, yung best to to the Lord and to the others that you serve, especially if nakikita hindi ka na nakangiti. <laughs> Kasi mangot ka na. <laughs> Yeah. Can, can I add yes. something related to the how-to of self-care? Mm-hmm. So I think Pastor Georgia talked about the principles behind self-care. Mm-hmm. You know, so compassion fatigue applies not only to pastors but other church leaders. Mm-hmm. You know, or any caregiver for that matter. You know, if we're taking care of our family, taking care of somebody else mm-hmm. in our job, mm-hmm. like in my job as a psychologist, I listen to people's problems day in and day out. Every day, that's what I listen to. And then people ask me, how can you manage to you know, listen to people's problems and manage your own problems, mm-hmm. right? So your compassion fatigue, like what Pastor Giorgio was referring to, uh, applies to caregivers, whether in the context of um, uh, being a church leader, a pastor, or other capacities as a people helper. Uh, how to? The other part I want to uh, deal with, yung OFWs themselves, mm-hmm. you know. How do you take care of yourselves? Because you're in a situation, especially those, like what you mentioned earlier, away from families. You know, those, some of our um, kababayan, di ba, nag-aalaga sila ng mga bata, or working as domestic helpers, mm-hmm. right? Or even just the physical demand of your job, right? So how do we deal with those things? While taking care of others, how do we take care of ourselves? So... Let me just highlight a few things. Number one, watch out for your physical health. Mm-hmm. The three pillars of health. Eat healthy. It's very uh, possible that we eat out of frustration, stress. Uh, anger, stress. We call it emotional eating. And before we know it, you know, we're going to gain weight. We're going to mm-hmm. be unhealthy. So eat healthy. Uh, get in a fuel. You know, get enough rest, sleep, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, and then make sure that you also move, you know, exercise, whatever form that takes. You mentioned something earlier about, uh, you know, it sounds so simple, the triggers, mm-hmm. you know, when people uh, have, uh, all of a sudden, they just, they're burnt out, mm-hmm. right? H-A-L-T, halt, stop. H refers to hungry, A, angry, L, lonely, T, tired. Mm-hmm. H-A-L-T. So hunger and tiredness they all are fatigue, they all refer to the physical states mm-hmm. of our bodies, you know, our physical states. Angry and lonely refer to emotional states. Mm-hmm. So listen to your emotions when you're angry, you know, when you're lonely, or your physical states. All you need is probably just have something to eat when you're hungry. Sometimes mm-hmm. I forget to eat. Oh, it's lunchtime or it's dinner time. Did I eat? You know, or fatigue, you know, sleeping uh, and getting enough rest. So uh, H-A-L-T. Mm-hmm. So, Watch your physical health, mobilize your support system. Make sure you have a group of people. So you mga pastors or church leaders, or even in my field as psychologists, we cannot just talk to anybody about their experiences. Of course, confidentiality is uh, number one for anybody, you know, in, in our church, as leaders, as caregivers, caretakers, and then in my field especially, you know, I cannot talk to others about, you know, specifics, you know, or disclosing confidentiality but we can case conference we can talk about uh, issues for example so getting the, the you know the expertise consultation from other colleagues you know mm-hmm. or um some mga pastors siguro in group of pastors talking to themselves or the pastor's wives you know the pastor's wife have their own uh, issues as well you know mm-hmm. of compassion fatigue 
So mobilize your support system, watch your physical health, uh, and then take a break. You know, I think that's part of the rest also. Sometimes it's as simple as that. Just take a break. Take vacations. I like to travel. Sabbath. I like to, yeah, the Sabbath day, right? Mm -hmm. And sometimes I would take vacations for a long time. Like this time I'm gone for a few weeks and my patients are asking, you know, oh, that long, huh? But I would also say, you know, it's part of self-care. Mm -hmm. Remember I tell you to take care of yourself? This is how I take care of myself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So those are just some of the ways by which, you know, we can... Mm -hmm. uh, do the how-tos of self-care. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe you should add to that uh, also in terms of young <clears throat> pastor uh, helping themselves by organizing themselves into some sort of a ministerial grouping that mm -hmm. can pray for each other, you know, on a regular basis. I don't care if that's uh, once a month or twice a month, mm -hmm. pero kung meron kang group o yung support group ng mga pastors na nag uh, like we meet regularly so they can share their burdens with one another and also uh, pray for one another. Mm -hmm. To me, uh, my experience with that has been very positive. Mm -hmm. I, I felt very much, uh, you know, uh, in a way, uh, refreshed. Kasi hindi ko akalain na yung problema ko pala, problema din ng ibang pastor. Mm -hmm. At the same time, uh, nalalama ko yung kanyang concerns and... Uh, uh, you know, in kanya mga frustrations, and we can both lift each other up to the Lord, uh, you know, in, in terms of prayer. Mm -hmm. Okay, so moving on, uh, we're going to talk about gender identity. And uh, our very controversial um, question about this is, how would you advise a Christian who is struggling with same-sex attraction? Okay, magandang tanong yan, Sister Love. Uh, I think it's important for us to make uh, this very clear to our uh, friends in the LGBTQ community no? Na, who are facing this kind of predicament. Mm -hmm. It's important to make a distinction between what the Bible uh, says uh, is homosexual practice and an yung na experience sa manong mga nakaka experience in same sex attraction in terms of them having, for example, homosexual or lesbian inclinations, mm -hmm. right? Uh, the Bible does not condemn people who are experiencing homosexual inclinations or desires or lesbian uh, desires or inclinations. I think that's very clear from Scripture. What the Bible says is not pleasing to the Lord is homosexual or lesbian practice mm -hmm. uh, in terms of uh, the practice of homosexual or lesbian sexual acts. So, so having said that, how can we help people who are experiencing uh, same-sex attraction? I think what uh, we can advise them is this. Uh, they should not feel as if uh, they are uh, uh, deviant in any way. Uh, ang palagi kong nababanggit sa topic na ito is simply lang sabi ko, we live in a fallen, broken world, you know. And what you are experiencing is actually, if you read scripture, is actually part of the brokenness of this world na yung, yung sexuality ng, ng human being in terms of being male or female is being either uh, blurred or distorted, you know? Kasi uh, that's what media oftentimes tell us. It's okay to dress androgynously, you know, like David Bowie or Michael Jackson, mm -hmm. na okay mga relationships portrayed in Brokeback Mountain mm -hmm. or, uh, you know, Fifty Shades of Grey. Uh, Pero ang importante is uh, how, how do we uh, ensure that uh, we do not fall into the trap of, of uh, you know, transitioning from uh, inclinations to actual practice. Mm -hmm. Sa akin, simple lang yung sagot eh, And it's based on Romans 12 verses 1 and 2 again, right? Uh, how can we present our bodies, our entire persons as living sacrifices to God, holy and acceptable to Him? Mm -hmm. Anong sinasabi ni Apostle Paul? We must not be conformed to this mm -hmm. world. Okay, unang una na yun. Huwag tayong gagaya daw sa mga sinful behavioral patterns. Kahit na itong bad patterns ito, eh, nakikita natin sa ating mga kaibigan, mga close circle of friends. No? Pangalawa, we must be transformed. <laughs> and have our minds renewed. Not just by ourselves, uh, but rather by uh, the power of God Himself uh, through His Holy Spirit. No? Mm -hmm. Kasi as we struggle against these uh, same-sex attractions, it's not enough to summon willpower mm -hmm. or sheer you know, 
determination to overcome this, we will always fail. What we need are actually divine resources mm -hmm. that will uh, enable us to, uh, in our struggle against uh, same-sex attraction, to overcome the temptation to eventually, uh, you know, actualize the inclination in terms of actual practice or sexual acts. Mm -hmm. Is that easy? No, it's not easy. It's definitely hard. But the more practical thing to do is, uh, you know, if you can uh, uh, lessen your exposure to homosexual stimuli that mm -hmm. uh, tends to, for example, accentuate your homosexual inclinations so that you are tempted to actually go over the line in terms of committing homosexual acts. So you must avoid these stimuli in terms of your immediate environment. You know, if you are an avid reader of books or magazines uh, that champion, for example, the, the homosexual cause and justify or rationalize it, I suggest uh, you stop subscribing to these newspapers or magazines or reading books or watching movies or TV shows, you know, that tend to normalize this behavior as if it is amoral behavior and not morally repugnant. And I think that's uh, uh, putting it negatively. The other uh, side, of course, is uh, thinking positively. We must fill our minds with positive things. Uh, as uh, the Book of Philippians enjoys us, right? We have to focus our minds on things that are true, noble, right, pure, lovely, gracious, and excellent and praiseworthy things. Mm -hmm. We are to uh, uh, likewise surrender our lives. To, to and of course our entire personality to the Lord uh, because oftentimes uh, the the evil one makes inroads into our personality through these aspects of our life that are not submitted to the Lordship of the Lord Jesus mm -hmm. Christ and that's why it's oftentimes good to uh, ask ourselves this uh, kind of uh, uh, spiritual health check question asking ourselves, you know, who is it really that, that occupies or sits on the throne of my heart? You know, mm -hmm. is it really the Lord Jesus? Mm -hmm. Or is it my propensity to, for example, a please a friend who is homosexual? No? Kasi pag binigyan mong, of course, more importance yung sinasabi na kaibigan mo kaysa sinasabi ng Panginoon through Scripture, mm -hmm. then that's it. The battle is lost. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. So we must decide where our loyalty lies, mm -hmm. our love lies, our commitment lies, where our devotion is, and whether we are truly, totally devoted mm -hmm. to God. Because that is so essential. Because the moment uh, the devil finds a chink in our spiritual armor, that is where we will be attacked. Mm -hmm. And if the chink happens to be same-sex attraction, mind you, <laughs> the devil knows mm -hmm. <laughs> what that weakness will be, and he will surely try to bring us down mm -hmm. Uh, using that, uh, you know, uh, chip on our shoulder. Mm -hmm. So that's how I would, uh, you know, advise uh, people who have this uh, same-sex attraction. And if possible, uh, you know, uh, you must choose your friends carefully. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because if you surround yourself with homosexual friends, mm -hmm. you know, oftentimes, uh, you know, bad company really ruins character. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, you know, if we do not take good care of uh, how uh, we shape our character in terms of the inputs that we make in terms of friendships, then surely, you know, we are in effect uh, uh, saying uh, that uh, our uh, uh, destiny has already been decided because we've made, you know, bad moral choices in terms of choosing the wrong kinds of friends. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Something just very practical. Just as, mm -hmm. like what I tell my children, you know, you must choose your friends carefully because mm -hmm. who they are, you you definitely uh, cannot insulate yourselves from their influence, mm -hmm. whether these are positive influences or more importantly, negative influences. Mm -hmm. And of course, you must teach our children to uh, uh, be uh, prayerful in terms of acquiring what I would call divine wisdom. Mm -hmm. And by wisdom, of course, we simply know how this is defined by Scripture. No? Wisdom, godly wisdom, is the ability to differentiate what is right from what is wrong, what is good from what is evil. Because once that distinction is blurred, you know, that is where people, especially young people, fall into the trap mm -hmm. 
of ensnaring themselves into all sorts of things, mm -hmm. uh, you know, addictions like uh, gambling, pornography, yeah. uh, inordinate uh, uh, usage of, uh, you know, uh, the computer in terms of video games, and of course, technology. Yeah, that's right. And of course, uh, social media, where there are so many influencers, and if you're not careful about your values, you are likely to be influenced as well. Exactly. Yes. Which leads us to the next question, Doc Lil, no, about addiction. Yeah. So the the most common forms of addictions are like drugs, pornography, video games. But are there other types of uh, addictions that, it, on the surface, it looks harmless, but are actually uh, harming our Christian testimony? Mm -hmm. yeah. So let me refer first to the um, other types of addiction mm -hmm. or the classic types of addiction and then just the use of the word addiction. So uh, you are familiar with substances, mm -hmm. alcohol and drugs. In, in a, and all of themselves, these substances are addictive. You know, uh, Some people talk about food. Is food addictive? Not necessarily, mm -hmm. but sugar can be addictive, mm -hmm. right? Uh, behaviors, so we have behavioral addictions. Gambling is one of them. Sex addiction, mm -hmm. uh, pornography. Uh, online or otherwise, mm -hmm. and then internet, you know, gaming, especially for you know young people or young adults, those are behavioral addictions. Uh, what characterizes addictions in general? So I guess there are like three C's. One, if it's chronic, ongoing mm -hmm. for a while. If there is no control, you know, people, nobody says, when I grow up, I want to be a heroin addict. <laughs> All right. Yeah, so, uh, or I want to be a gambling addict, or I want to be a sex addict. Nobody ever says that, but uh, it takes control of their life. So when they start, it's just sort of like experimental, and then misuse, and then abuse. So any form of addiction is actually misuse of good, and good is everything that God created uh, was good until you know, the fall happened and we disobeyed God, you know, Adam and Eve, when it first started. But, so control, so there's the... Uh, chronicity, you know, chronic, out of control. Now it's the substances. Now it's the behavior controlling them. And you know, every time they get a chance to look up, you know, online pornography, the wife just left, you know, or the wife is out of town, mm -hmm. or the kids, you know, whenever they have extra time to play like internet, right, games, and then mom gave them extra time, they would use that. Or in the weekends, right? So sila na yung control. Nakala nila sila yung in control. Uh, and then there's also consequences. Mm -hmm. So with substances, we've heard of people losing families, houses, you know, ending up in jail, you know, worse consequences. That can happen also with gambling, mm -hmm. you know, pornography, you know, broken relationships. That was yung uh, gaming addiction, yung mga bata. You know, somebody was telling me about in the ER, physicians were saying yung mga bata na ganyan, no? Parang stiff neck mm -hmm. for a long time, permanent, because of the way they just do... Uh, they watch with, in that position. Or blood clots. You know, we've heard extreme cases of people or kids you know, dying from blood clots because they're sitting all day long, mm -hmm. you know, hours and hours. So these are physical, medical consequences, right? And also, it's all consuming. If there's anything that characterizes addiction, how many of us actually think about, oh, today I'm going to be uh, spending time drinking alcohol or mm -hmm. you know, I'll have time to play my games, you know? You in Isip natin yung, it's all consuming. It starts in the mind. So I think there are four C's, not just three. Mm -hmm. right? All consuming, mind consuming, a chronicity, chronic, mm -hmm. uh, out of control, you've lost control, and then there are consequences. Mm -hmm. And so the question with regard to addictions, right? There are different forms of addiction. One of them is food addiction. Okay, I'm using the word loosely addiction, but you have to look at those, those four C's, for example. Or maybe a simpler way to put it is like C-A-G-E, right? Mm -hmm. Do you feel uh, C uh, when somebody's criticizing you, right? Do you feel criticized by others mm -hmm. with regard to your use of the internet or with regard to gambling or with regard to your eating, right? A, do you feel annoyed when people give comments about that behavior mm -hmm. or your use of substances? Do you feel guilty? And then, is it like an eye-opener? You wake up in the morning having to take a drink of alcohol. You wake up in the morning with social media. Yeah, 
another form of addiction, right? Hindi naman masama yun eh. But then you spend hours and hours on social media for Christians instead of spending hours and hours praying mm -hmm. and reading the Bible, right? First thing in the morning, we're supposed to actually meet with God. Mm -hmm. And what do we do? Meet with friends online, mm -hmm. right? So you're asking about other types of addiction. Food, social media, and then uh, gaming is not categorized right now as a, you know, technically an addiction, but it's also leading to that, right? And then um, there's another form. Um, somebody was mentioning that to me earlier in a talk, you know, we're talking about it casually, hoarding. Yes. Some people tend to hoard. Mm -hmm. And really the basis of hoarding is anxiety. They're so anxious, they can't let go, mm -hmm. you know. It's a form of control. Basic to anxiety also is wanting to be in control, but it's the, the thing or the things that are controlling you. Tapos balita ko sa Middle East, maraming gold soup. Ayan. It's another form of yes. addiction, quote unquote, mm -hmm. you know. As I said, if all those other C's or other different indicators of addiction mm -hmm. are starting to happen, watch out. There's something else I want to discuss. Well, both of them, hoarding and then, uh, and then yung gold mm -hmm. or any kind of material things. That's really materialism, right? Holding on to something. Physical things, material possessions that we think will satisfy us. There's another kind of addiction on relationships, codependency. Mm -hmm. Another way to look at codependency is that it's a form of addiction and relationship. Uh, codependency is when helping hurts. So this is probably typical of OFWs or immigrants in other countries of the world, Filipinos. Tutulungan natin yung pamilya natin, syempre, ano, di ba, na-bless tayo ng Lord. We make more money, we're in a position to help them. Pero minsan sobra na. You know, that's where we set our boundaries, you know. Stewardship. Are we uh, setting boundaries such that we don't enable, we don't rescue other family members who are depending on us, right? Mm -hmm. And do not work or do not work enough to support themselves. Yun, isa pa rin klaseng ng, ano yun, ng codependency, another form of addiction on relationships. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So... Yeah, those are the different types of addictions that we have to watch out for. Mm -hmm. At the same time, I want to end with, uh, uh, it's, there's a quote, it paraphrase us uh, by Blaise Pascal, paraphrase us, there is a God-shaped vacuum mm -hmm. in each of us, in mm -hmm. our hearts. Uh, it's God-shaped, and only God can fill that void. Mm -hmm. We try to fill that void. It's a longer quote from Blaise Pascal, but basically, we all try to fill our void you know, in our heart. We all long for God. God created us for an eternal relationship with him. Mm -hmm. That relationship was broken. So ngayon, gusto natin ma-feel yung dissatisfaction, the disconnect between God and us, which is the ultimate source of satisfaction with things, with people, mm -hmm. with substances, with behaviors that, you know, they're trying to fit in that void. Only mm -hmm. God can fill that void. So all mm -hmm. forms of addiction is basically a search for fulfillment mm -hmm. that only God can give us. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Dr. Lil. I remember one of the talks that Pastor Jojo uh, mentioned um, towards the 21st century paganism. So all those forms mm -hmm. are actually forms of idolatry. Mm -hmm. Anything that substitutes God in our in our uh -huh. lives. Mm -hmm. I was Alamon that reminded me. So COVID, what has been our idol? Health. Yes. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are so conscious about health. Number mm -hmm. one, you know, mm -hmm. oh, that could have been like in taking the form of idolatry, mm -hmm. taking the place of God in our lives. Yes, mm -hmm. exactly. Thank you, Dr. Lil. Mm -hmm. And for our last question, uh, this is actually a theological question. Mm -hmm. uh, in life's suffering and loneliness, can we say that God also suffers with us? This is an idea that were developed that was developed by you know theologians and, and people who actually survived mm -hmm. world wars or like mm -hmm. uh, sickness or illnesses. So, how what what can you say about this, Professor Dina? Oh. Does God suffer with us when we suffer? Mm -hmm. 100% plus, <laughs> always. Uh, he doesn't sleep. Mm -hmm. We always say, be still and know that I am God. Mm -hmm. When we suffer, He suffers with us. When we cry, He cries with us. When we need something, He is there. All we have to do is actually ask God for help. I'm a cancer patient mm -hmm. uh, four times. I started when I was 24. And then it recurred, uh, and I was 34, and then 44 and 54. 
So I went into uh, surgery, uh, radiation and chemotherapy. Nakita ko yung aking buhok ng lalagas, nawawala yung beauty ko, you know, but uh, it's a way for me to trust get more of my life. Mm -hmm. I suffer, I lost my voice for a year and a half, I lost, I thought I'm going to lost my job, mm -hmm. kasi yung teaching is my bread and butter, mm -hmm. but I'm so glad that uh, my boss allowed me to to work at home. Mm -hmm. So, matagal na, natuto pala ako ng work at home para yung pandemic, you know, you don't have to to be there, but you you can work at home. Uh, and then I was part of those uh, yung vapor sa Negros Navigation mm -hmm. na, na save na maraming namatay. So, another life God has given me. Uh, for many times, I actually was almost molested three times. Mm -hmm. When I was eight, when I was sixteen, and when I was twenty-three, but again, God saved me. So that's part of suffering uh, that I experienced. But the greatest thing that I learned in, in life is to trust God more of my life. Mm -hmm. uh, learning that the Bible is the the comfort. Share mm -hmm. your love letter ng Panginoon sa akin when I read the Book of Psalms, when I read the Proverbs. When I was teaching in, in the classroom, I used actually Proverbs. Mm -hmm. So it's in Proverbs uh, chapters 1 to 31, mm -hmm. and there are uh, 31 days. So if I go to a class, I will tell my class that if you have your uh, New Testament with you given by the Gideon uh, uh, International, mm -hmm. and if it's, this is November 10, open your Proverbs 10, and all we have to do is read, without, without even, just read it. Mm -hmm. So it's either uh, boys or girls will read uh, verse 1, and boys will read verse 2. And students will ask me and say, what is the meaning? But since we are not allowed to use it in the classroom, mm -hmm. all I have to do is come and ask me after the class. And suffering is not only for me, but even suffering is even the students who are coming to class. Um, loneliness is not easy. Mm -hmm. When you feel lonely, you're alone, and no one can take care of yourself uh, except you. And, and again, what Pastor Jojo was saying, you know, you need this, and you need that, the cross. So, um, what I usually do is I have find people, uh, be with them, and be present with them. And I was looking at the OFW people that we have here in Bahrain, or even in other countries. All you have to do is spend time, take the time listening to them. Mm -hmm. All you have to do is listen. Uh, because being alone is not easy. It, you may experience depression or stress, mm -hmm. but when you started to share, just be open, to be honest. There is that uh, comfort. And knowing that somebody cares, the most important is someone cares. Mm -hmm. And when you look up, the good thing is like, you look up to the sky, and then you know that God is there. That's why you see, just look up, and then you find that God is looking over, and every. And everywhere, whether you go to Bahrain or Oman or to Saudi Arabia or to the Philippines or the US, Canada, wherever, he is there and you are not alone. Mm -hmm. And then you look around, you have people around you, like in the church. You know, they are they are you are surrounded by people mm -hmm. and you don't feel alone at all. One of the things that I actually uh, develop in Messi is to meditate. Mm -hmm. In the morning, uh, I sing, and then I read the Bible, and I pray. And then, you know, it's, it's good, like, if you forget to say thanks to the food that God has given you. Mm -hmm. So that's part of uh, thanking God that you're not alone. God has provided you with food. Mm -hmm. Or the other one, the end of the, the night, you continue just to be with God. Mm -hmm. And then you don't feel alone at all. Um, 
I think the worst that uh, I find is like being much anxious about anything, mm -hmm. but in everything, in everything, by prayer and supplication, <coughs> mm -hmm. let two requests be made known to God mm -hmm. because He cares for you. He, you are not alone. Your suffering is not you alone. Mm -hmm. Your being alone is not you alone. Somebody is with you. The good thing about the church is um, you can listen to God's word, you can sing together, you can pray together. Mm -hmm. And uh, for students, for example, who are going to the Philippines, know that you are not alone. There are mm -hmm. campus ministries that you can be involved with to me, like in the Varsity Christian Fellowship, or the mm -hmm. Navigators, or the church in where you are. Mm -hmm. And then you have a part, God has given you a role to play. Mm -hmm. uh, God put you in Bahrain because He has a purpose for your life. Mm -hmm. When you move to another place, He is with you. You are not alone. Mm -hmm. And then He will be with you. For mothers, I think I realized that uh, the women's group in the church help a lot, uh, comforting each other, mm -hmm. uh, suffering together, crying together, sharing stories together. And for the fathers, I I realized that in spite of this fight of the distance with their loved ones, may it be their children or their wife or their relatives, you can see that they cry because they love their family members. Mm -hmm. uh, all in all, I am just saying that we are not alone. God suffers with us. Uh, the promise is, I will be with you wherever you go. And whatever you do. Once again, we would like to thank everybody who watched this very special episode on mental health, depression, anxiety, gender issues, and suffering. And we would like to thank again our guests who came all the way from from Canada and the U.S. Uh, Professor Lina, Pastor Jojo, and Dr. Lil. Thank you, and we hope that you learned so many things that will help you in your ministries. And we hope that you were encouraged with this episode or the series of episodes. Uh, for, for this on point on mental health. Magandang gabi po at maraming pong salamat sa lahat.